I started writing this talk about chemistry and I looked at ethanol, a form of alcohol in alcoholic beverages. And then I started reading about hangovers. And I thought, wow, that's kind of, kind of a complicated story, but it's pretty cool. So let's look at um, ethanol. Because if we can understand this, then we can start to understand what a hangover is. It's a structural formula of this type of alcohol. Carbon chain. Okay, anything that's organic, whether it's a fat or protein, has this backbone of carbons. Now this is the structure of it, but molecular, it's the same thing. It just is a short version. Now it's very stable. That's why carbon seems to be in all living things. You know, it has these bonding sites. It's stable, predictable. We can count on it. Ethanol is a little bit different at one end because it has a negative charge. That makes it makes it reactive. Okay. And reactive substances, you know, you might think, well, what do I care? You know, who cares? But think of radioactivity, man. It can kill you. So stable atoms have the same number of protons, neutrons in the middle here, electrons, yeah. So it's all the same number. That's a stable atom. But in ethanol, it has a negative charge, which, you know, makes it reactive. That's a little part of the story. Dehydration is a big part of the story because how healthy is your pee? <laughs> We're going to find that out. Diuretic is when we have to urinate frequently. Diuresis is the process. And that is what alcohol does to us, right? I think most of us know that. But let's look at the numbers here. 10 grams of alcohol is not that much. But it makes you pee 100 milliliters. Of urine right? and that is a lot and if we're going to talk about dehydration we've got to talk about the kidneys you know and the brain because without talking about the brain and the kidneys then there's not much of a story so base of the brain there's two important glands they're well protected thank goodness a bony skull hypothalamus it's going to make this Substance called antidiuretic hormone. All right. And that's going to stop us from peeing too much. Anti, see that prefix anti, think of no pee, no pee. ADH, also called in medicine, we call it vasopressin. Um, it's made in the, in the hypothalamus, but stored in the pituitary. Right. So the pituitary's kind of got the it's a storehouse, man. It's, it has the gates. It's going to release it when we need it. Now, alcohol, the, the initial effect of alcohol is like working out. So that's why I put this here. Because when we exercise, we're going to lose water by sweating. It's called uh, evaporative cooling. Thank goodness, man. We can live in the hottest places on Earth uh, as long as we've got water. Well, the, the effect of this, though, we lose water and the blood becomes concentrated. Heme means blood. Concentrated. So concentrated blood, yeah. Uh, no surprise. <laughs> if you take the water out of plasma, it's going to get kind of thick, man. Not quite like syrup, but puts a little load on the, on the body. Well, the hypothalamus is going to detect that. It's going to say, hey, man, your blood's way too thick. We're going to start saving some water, okay? And so that is going to trigger the release of ADH, and then the kidneys are going to hold on to some water. Now, now how do they do this? Well, it's not a simple thing, okay? I wish it was. Then, then you know, I'd just say this is how it happens. But let's take it step by step. All right, so here's the kidney. Blood is coming into the kidney, and blood is loaded with water in the form of plasma. Now, the kidney wants to get rid of the toxins, pee those out right here, and pull out as much water as it can. But it needs some water so you can pee, because you can't pee paste like a bird. All right, so first step, glomerulus. And I have two pictures of it. There it is. There it is. Okay, so all that's happening here 
is blood is pouring into this capsule. And the glomerulus has slits, and the blood is going to pour into the nephron. All right. With each beat of your heart, whoop, this happens. Thousands of thousands of these nephrons. Yeah. Thank goodness, man. Well, so here's the glomerulus. Here it is too. Here's the whole story, by the way. I kind of like this one. So we've pushed through the glomerulus, and now we're in the proximal convoluted tubule. That's the first section. Now don't don't let me lose you, man, because this is all happening in your kidneys right now, okay? This is happening at this very second, thousands of times. All those little toxins that, that are in your body are getting filtered. See those advertisements sometimes on uh, that we hear, they kind of ignore that the kidney is the, the hero, man. Hero's doing all the work here. Okay. Anyway, so Lots of things are being absorbed here, like amino acids, from proteins, vitamins, and water. And this is our first opportunity to get some water out of the blood. Now these walls are thin. They have to be thin so that water and you know, nutrients can pass out and into the bloodstream again. But if you have high blood pressure, then you can damage these. And it's one of those silent killers, you know. People don't know what's happening until they're 50 or 60, and their kidney function is way down. Now, we're not done yet, though, because we got the glomerulus, but the tubule is long. We passed the proximal, and now we're on to the loop of Henle. Now, in the loop of Henle, it's real salty, and so the, the, uh, the Henle's down here, right? And so water is going to pass out of the loop of Henle into the bloodstream. Goes down around the corner, comes back up. And then here's the distal tubule, number three. So here, same thing. We're almost ready to dump this out of the body. But here's our last chance. If ADH is low in the bloodstream, then we're going to pee like crazy. Now, I got this video that I really like because it shows what I'm talking about. And so we'll, we'll see the, the, the journey, the glomerulus, the proximal tubule, all the way to the distal tubule. All right. But I'm going to move it ahead because I know exactly where the action is. It's right around 135. Okay, so I want you to pay attention to the little blue blue um, spheres. That's water. Okay, here here's the. It's kind of hard to see, but there's the um, proximal tubule, and some of the blue. Now we're heading down, still in the proximal tubule. And those are the gates and some amino acids. You see this? I really like this. So we're through the kidney nephron. The blue guys are getting less and less abundant. Lots of water molecules. And now look at their gift because there's toxins, right? We're heading down to the loop of Henle. Right, number two. And here it's going to be salty all around. So watch, we're going to lose some more water molecules somewhere here. There should be some gates. Uh, you know, they're not showing those gates. All right, so we're, we're gathering toxins and we're dumping off water. Now up here, I want to get you to get ready because this is the distal convoluted tubule. This is our last chance. And if there's not much ADH, then we're not going to... Let's see if this has much ADH. I don't see any blue. There's sodium. The water's staying in there. Okay, so th this person's going to pee fairly clear urine. Which is healthy, okay. All right, so that was a, that was a cool little uh, journey, I think. Now there's a feedback system because we don't want ADH just going, you know, solid all the time, because then our pee would be you know, deep yellow, and we might have some problems with infection. So look at this diagram; it, it tells the story pretty well. Hypothalamus makes it. Pituitary releases it. Yeah, we kind of know that. That's all in the base of the brain. ADH, or vasopressin. 
What's his job? Did you forget his job? It's to stop us from peeing too much, right? So let's say you're dehydrated. You know, maybe it's the middle of the night, you know. And you haven't had a drink for five, six hours. Or your body says, hey, this guy's drying out, or this girl. And so let's dump a lot of H, uh, ADH and so that we pull water out of the distal tube. Yeah. Or let's say you've been drinking too much water. This happens. And the urine gets clear. Well, then that's a problem too. And so the body says, hey, uh, this, this, this is a problem. They're overhydrated. I'm going to talk about that. Now let's get back to the alcohol story before I just get too deep in the kidneys. Drinking alcohol has the opposite effect on the kidneys because it reduces the production of ADH. Okay, what's ADH do? Stops us from peeing too much. If it suppresses or reduces ADH, then we're going to pee like crazy. And that will lead to dehydration. Okay, you can you can bet on it. Now, let's look at the results. If you have a single shot of hard liquor like tequila, this forces your kidneys to release 120 milliliters of urine. And you already produce 60 to 80 per hour. So you're dumping ah, nearly yeah, 200 milliliters of urine every hour. All right. And here's a little diagram. I like it. Now, you might think, oh, I got an idea, man. I'll just drink water. I'll have a shot of tequila. I'll have a, a glass of water. The problem is the alcohol is suppressing your ADH, right? So you're just going to pee that water out. <laughs> I mean, it kind of helps. The experts will tell you to do that. But the problem is it, it, it's ADH. That's why I'm talking about the, the you know, the, the, the pituitary, the hypothalamus and the kidneys, because it's not a simple story. Right? It comes down to what's called plasma osmolarity. And that is like how much uh how many mineral salts and electrolytes are in the bloodstream. Is it really diluted or is it really concentrated? Remember hemoconcentration? Okay, good example. I like this one. I mentioned it. When we sleep, okay, that's gonna increase our osmolarity because we're not drinking water when we sleep. And so, you know, our hypothalamus says, hey, send some ADH, man. Stop this person from peeing. We've got to save every drop. And you wake up and your urine is dark in color. Yeah, that's real typical. You know, maybe it's down here. Sometimes it has a little odor. Now, if you want to know how to avoid dehydration, then, then you put all this to work, okay? Because now you know what ADH is, you know what the nephrons do, and you think, okay, if I can maintain my plasma osmolarity by eating, you know, vitamin-rich foods before I go out. And so now my body has hemoconcentration, and it can withstand a little loss of vitamins and electrolytes. Okay, it's like a little buffering system. Also avoid dark alcohol because it has uh, tannins, acetaldehyde. It has irritants and toxins, which your body is going to try to dump by urination. Also, pay attention to overhydration. How do you know you have overhydration? Your urine is too clear. Now, I don't like this chart in some ways because there should be another box here that shows clear urine, not good. Because if you have clear urine, you're overhydrated and you are going to get dehydrated because ADH is being suppressed. So slow it down or stop drinking alcohol or eat some food and vitamins, get the electrolytes, plasma osmolarity back. And then in the morning, hopefully you'll be smiling. Right. Thanks for listening.